All right, and this is a slightly more complicated problem because we've got more than one dimension that we've got to worry about. We've got a bowling ball going at nine meters per second. So that's fairly big and it's going to hit a bowling pin. Okay, so this is the ball. This is the pin and the pin is scattered off to the side. So there's our pin. This is a top view, obviously, from my drawing. And so what happens is afterwards, the pin is going to go off at some angle, which means the bowling ball is going to get deflected just a little bit. So this is the initial setup and the final setup would be um, I've got the pin going off here at an angle theta with a speed like this. That's the pin. And then the bowling ball is going to be probably because it's so much bigger. Sorry, it got big all of a sudden. Um, it's going to be going at a fairly high speed at a much smaller angle. So this is 15.8 um, degrees and this speed is 15 meters per second. And so the question is, what is the speed of the ball afterwards and the angle? Okay, so this is our initial, initial. This is our final. There are the external forces on this. Our system is the ball and the pin, both of those, the bowling ball and the bowling pin. And so what we can do is say the momentum initial is just the mass of the ball times its speed, nine meters per second in just the I hat direction. The final momentum is going to be, well, we've got X and Y components, right? We have for the pin, we have the mass of the pin times its speed, and it's got an X component and a Y component. And yep, we got to do Sokotoa. So if I look at this, I have my X component, right? V of the pin in the X is equal to V cosine of 15.8 and the y component is going to be v pin y is going to be this 15 times sine of the angle 15.8 degrees there's lots of 15s going on so mass of the pin times let's say v times cosine of 15.8 degrees in the i hat direction plus whatever the mass of the ball times its um, final in the x direction. That would be i hat. I think it's both going to be positive there. And then plus mass of the pin v sine 15.8 degrees j hat. And I think the ball's going to go down because my momentum in the y direction is going to, needs to be zero because my initial momentum is only in the x direction. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put this minus sign in here. If I'm wrong, I'll just get the wrong answer here. It'll, I'll just get a different sign here in the y. So in the j hat direction. So that would be in the minus j hat direction. And then I just need to equate the initial and the final. So I'm going to equate this with this part, the i hat parts, and then I'll equate plus zero j hat. I'll equate the j hat parts. And that's the way I'm going to do it. So when I equate these, I'm going to have the mass of the ball. I'll go ahead and put the values in 5.5 kilograms times 9 meters per second in the i hat is equal to mass of the pin, which is light, 0 0.85 kilograms times 15 meters per second times cosine of 15.8 degrees plus 5.50 kilograms times the ball, I'm just going to call that the X because that's what I need. I don't want quite so many um, subscripts. So that's the I hat equation. And then the J hat equation gives me zero is equal to 0 0.85 kilograms times 15 meters per second times sine of 15.8 degrees minus 5.05 kilograms VY.
Now I just need numbers for all of that. Okay, and so all of this together, when I calculate it, I get that that is equal to, um, all of that together it looks like 3.47 kilogram meters per second. And so I get a VY for the ball, the speed of 0 0.63 meters per second. Um, for this one, I get that that, let's see with the cosine, I get this is 12.3 kilogram meters per second. I get that this is 49.5 kilogram meters per second. I subtract 49.5. I subtract 12.3 from 49.5 and then divide that and I get Vx is equal to 6.77 meters per second. So those are my final speeds. Okay, so that's my final velocity. Of course, it wants magnitude and direction. So I need to go ahead and say those are my components. I have Vx and I have my Vy, it points down in this direction. I get 0.63 meters per second and I've got 6.77 meters per second. So I've got this angle right here. Tangent of theta is 0.63 meters per second over 6.77 meters per second. And that gives me a theta of 5.3 degrees. And then my V of the ball afterwards is 6.77 squared plus, if you want, minus 0.63. It doesn't matter, plus or minus squared meters per second. And so that gives me 6.8 meters per second as my final speed. The last thing I need to do is to say, is this elastic? Well, the way I tell whether it's elastic or not is I check kinetic energy initial, and then I check my kinetic energy final. And this includes both objects. So kinetic energy initial is just going to be one half mass of the ball, speed of the ball initial squared, which is one half times 5.50 kilograms times 9 meters per second squared is equal to some number which I calculated. Yeah, it's a pretty good size number. 223 joules. Uh, final, kinetic energy final, is 1 half mass of the ball times the ball final squared. So now I know that's my 6.8 meters per second plus one half mass of the pin, its speed squared, and that was uh, 15 meters a second there. And that's gotta be squared, and this was 0 0.85 kilograms. And so I get that this, the pin, has 95.6 joules of kinetic energy, and the ball has about 127 joules of kinetic energy. And when I add these together, I get 223 joules. So it is, in fact, an elastic collision.